government has continued to advocate an early years approach. On the cover of one report was this photograph of two brains, suggesting there was no doubt how vital early intervention was. The report cited studies claiming that a child's development score at a mere 22 months could serve as an accurate predictor of educational outcomes at 26 years. It also suggested that boys judged at the age of three as being at risk had two and a half times as many criminal convictions at age 21 as those deemed not at risk. But tomorrow a conference at the University of Kent will call into question the focus on this early years strategy. They want less government intervention at this age and suggest it's time parents calm down about the importance of childhood. Well, with us now is Eddie Lee, Director of Parenting Studies at the University of Kent, who's helping organise that conference. And the psychologist Oliver James joins us from Oxford. Why do you think this emphasis uh, on the first years is wrong? Well, it's a very old prejudice, so that's the first thing to say. So it certainly predates anything that anybody says they've found out recently. It's at least 300 years old. Um, I think that what's gone on more recently, though, is that there is an increasingly uh, moralistic dynamic um, to claims about the early years. So increasingly shrill claims are made that if parents don't heed by um, what's said, then really terrible things will happen to their children. Neither of which assertions demonstrate that it is wrong. Well, the claim about neuroscience, I think, is absolutely entirely wrong. So there is no new neuroscience which tells us that if parents don't do various things with really little children, then their brains are going to be shrunk. I mean, that is just utter rubbish. It's an unwarranted claim, and as people will discuss at our conference, it's better understood as neuro-nonsense or neuromania um, than any sensible argument uh, okay. about anything that's... Oliver James, what do you make of this? Uh, I, I don't even understand why we're discussing this on Newsnight. It's a completely accepted fact by people who have actually read the evidence, which Dr. Lee quite obviously hasn't, that the quality of care that you have in the early years is critical for how you turn out in adult life, but particularly for your emotional development. And if you just look at Dr. Lee at, say, page 335 of my book, They F You Up, you'll see 30 studies which show quite clearly and without question that the earlier the damage is done, that is the earlier a child is maltreated, not loved, abused, neglected, the earlier it is neglected, the more likely it is to suffer all sorts of emotional problems in later life. And take, for example, a study of 800 children which showed that if there was maltreatment between 0 and 3, the outcomes were that much worse than if the maltreatment was between 3 and 6, all than if it was between six and nine. Now, have you read any of these studies, Dr. Lee? Going on about the neuroscience, okay, okay. it's completely irrelevant. Right, right. Well, listen, have you read these studies? Yes, I've read plenty of them, and there's plenty say one thing, plenty say the other, and my no, perception no, no, of it... No, that's not true. Hang on a sec. Name one study hang, that hang shows... On. Name one study that doesn't... that contradicts the contention just, that just, the early years are more important. On. Name okay. one can study. I say just, yeah, just, just name one study that contradicts... Well, there's, the changes are such. There's, there's plenty of studies. So, for example, if he reads Jerome Kagan, he'll find plenty of arguments no, against Jerome what's being Kagan said. Can, can I say something or not? not no? Okay. There's <laughs> my my argument about this and my perception of, of the research is it's like lots of areas of research where there's plenty of different findings and we can have a perfectly reasonable debate. But I think the thing that's happened in this area, which is why I say it's acquired an increasingly moralistic dynamic is that certain advocates like Oliver James have become increasingly shrill and increasingly one-sided in the way that they're posing things. Because what they're really trying to do is to turn research into a kind of battering ram to convince parents to do what they think but they should the do. But if the research demonstrates parents, one thing, surely it's its it, duty to... It doesn't demonstrate one thing. And, you know, studies are studies, and we can have a debate about where, what various studies say, and that's a reasonable discussion to have. What isn't reasonable is to one-sidedly turn this into a crusade and to override the idea that parents have an entirely legitimate right and a legitimate interest um, in deciding for themselves about various aspects of how they conduct their family life. Like, for example, 
whether or not to put a child into daycare. Now, Oliver James is uh, currently on a crusade against mothers putting their children in daycare. He can say what he wants about studies. Some studies say one thing, some studies say the other. I think that in the normal run of family life, then you should let, let parents decide what they think is best for themselves. Let them relax about all of this and do what they feel makes most sense in terms of their work-life balance and in terms of conducting ordinary, everyday family life and, and getting things to fit together. Well, James, would you be, and it's just really got would, out of control. Would you be top, willing to let morning. parents relax? Absolutely. I'm all in favour of parents relaxing and indeed letting them do what they want to do, which survey after survey shows is look after their children and love them. And Dr. Lee, who clearly hasn't read these studies, she says there are all these different studies which have different conflicting views, absolute oh. rubbish. She hasn't read the studies. If you had read them, Dr. Lee, you would know that they clearly show that the early years are critical in setting the electrochemical thermostat for the rest of your life. And that's why it should be the basis of government policy. When Gordon Brown was uh, trying to bail out the banks, he kept on saying, we'll do whatever it takes to, uh, to save the banks. If only, he had said, we'll do whatever it takes to enable parents to be able to look after their children, to be at home and look after their children, which is which children. Children. I don't think parents are doing a fine job. I think we actually already have an early intervention culture. I'm married to what all the other parents are doing every day. They're doing a fine job. is to allow all parents of under three-year-olds to have the national average wage. Each family should have that. One or other parent, or they could share them could share that and uh, always be at home, or if they don't want to look after their children, they can employ a nanny. And this could be paid for by redistributing wealth, or 1% of the British <laughs> land mass is still owned by the Ministry of Defence. Why not sell some of that off? All right. You, you wouldn't... It's, a, it, it's an interesting, unusual idea, but you have no objection to that in principle, do you? I think if... We can't do any harm to have a, a, an intense focus on a child in its early years. Well, it, it depends. I think that there's plenty of other studies and, oh. and uh, plenty of research. One. Come on, name some studies. You keep well, saying all these studies. It, it, you obviously haven't read the literature because you can't actually name them. Okay. I'm talking about sociological studies, which probably you haven't spent an awful lot of time I looking at, which been. look at... Um, Mother's experience of being mothers these days and I indicate have, indeed, I've written that extensively mothers extensively about that, and I have read those those studies. Yes, right, with some of which were done in at the University of Kent. I, I, look, I sense we're not going to get a meeting of minds here, so well, I think we're just... not going to get a meeting of minds. But I think it must be possible to have a reasonable discussion about this. It must be possible to recognise the everyday experience of lots and lots of mothers and lots and lots of parents at the moment is that they are far too anxious and far too worried. Actually, what we need, I think, is a public discourse which recognises that we don't have a phenomenal parenting deficit right. in this country. Most parents are doing a fine job. Right, let's leave it there. We thank should recognise that. Okay, thank you both very much. Uh, that's all from uh, Newsnight tonight. The